This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Annie Coleman in St. Louis, Missouri, in February 2006. Ulysses by James Joyce Chapter 8 Part 1 Pineapple Rock, Lemon Platt, Butterscotch, A sugar-sticky girl shoveling scoopfuls of creams for a Christian brother, Some school treat, bad for their tummies, Lozenge and comfort manufacturer to His Majesty the King, God, save, our, sitting on his throne sucking red jujubes white. A somber Y.M.C.A. young man watchful among the warm, sweet fumes of Graham lemons placed a throwaway in a hand of Mr. Bloom. Heart-to-heart -heart talks. Blue... Me? No. Blood of the Lamb. His slow feet walked him riverward, reading, Are you saved? All are washed in the blood of the Lamb. God wants blood victim. Birth, hymen, martyr, war, foundation of a building, sacrifice, kidney, burnt offering, druids, altars. Elijah is coming. Dr. John Alexander Dowie, restorer of the church in Zion, is coming. Is coming, is coming, is coming, all heartily welcome. Paying game. Tory and Alexander last year. Polygamy. His wife will put the stopper on that. Where was that ad some Birmingham firm, the luminous crucifix? Our Saviour. Wake up in the dead of night and see him on the wall, hanging. Pepper's ghost idea. Iron nails ran in. Phosphorus it must be done with. If you leave a bit of codfish, for instance, I could see the bluey silver over it. Night I went down to the pantry in the kitchen. Don't like all the smells in it waiting to rush out. What was it she wanted? The Malaga raisins. Thinking of Spain, before Rudy was born. The phosphorescence, that bluey-greeny. Very good for the brain. From Butler's Monument House corner he glanced along Bachelor's Walk. Daedalus's daughter there still, outside Dylan's auction rooms. Must be selling off some old furniture. Knew her eyes at once from the father. Lobbing about waiting for him. Home always breaks up when the mother goes. Fifteen children he had. Birth every year, almost. That's in their theology, or the priest won't give the poor woman the confession, the absolution. Increase and multiply. Did you ever hear such an idea? Eat you out of house and home. No families themselves to feed. Living on the fat of the land. Their butteries and larders. I'd like to see them do the black fast Yom Kippur. Cross buns. One meal and a collation for fear he'd collapse on the altar. A housekeeper of one of those fellows, if you could pick it out of her. Never pick it out of her. Like getting L.S.D. out of him. Does himself well. No guests. All for number one. Watching his water. Bring your own bread and butter. His reverence. Mum's the word. Good Lord, that poor child's dress is in flitters. Underfed she looks, too. Potatoes and marge, marge and potatoes. It's after they feel it. Proof of the pudding undermines the Constitution. As he set foot on O'Connell Bridge, a puffball of smoke plumed up from the parapet. Brewery barge with export stout. England. Sea air sours it, I heard. Be interesting some day. Get a pass through Hancock to see the brewery. Regular world in itself. Vats of porter wonderful. Rats get in, too. Drink themselves bloated as big as a collie floating. Dead drunk on the porter. Drink till they puke again like Christians. Imagine drinking that. Rats? Vats. Well, of course, if we knew all the things. Looking down, he saw, flapping strongly, wheeling between the gaunt quay walls, gulls. Rough weather outside. If I threw myself down... Reuben J.'s son must have swallowed a good bellyful of that sewage. One and eight pence too much. Hmm. It's the droll way he comes out with the things. Knows how to tell a story, too. 
They wheeled lower, looking for grub. Wait. He threw down among them a crumpled paper ball. Elijah, thirty-two feet per sec, is come. Not a bit. The ball bobbed unheeded on the wake of swells, floated under by the bridge piers. Not such damn fools. Also the day I threw that stale cake out of Aaron's king, picked it up in the wake fifty yards astern. Live by their wits. They wheeled, flapping. The hungry famished gull flaps o'er the waters dull. That is how poets write, the similar sounds. But then Shakespeare has no rhymes, blank verse. The flow of the language it is. The thoughts. Solemn. Hamlet, I am thy father's spirit, doomed for a certain time to walk the earth. Two apples a penny, two for a penny. His gaze passed over the glazed apples, serried on her stand. Australians they must be this time of year. Shiny peels, polishes them up with a rag or a handkerchief. Wait, those poor birds. He halted again, and bought from the old apple-woman two Banbury cakes for a penny, and broke the brittle paste and threw its fragments down into the liffy. See that? The gulls swooped silently, two, then all from their heights, pouncing on prey. Gone, every morsel. Aware of their greed and cunning, he shook the powdery crumb from his hands. They never expected that. Manna! Live on fish, fishy flesh they have. All seabirds, gulls, sea-goose. Swans from Anna Liffey swim down here sometimes to preen themselves. No accounting for tastes. Wonder what kind is swan meat. Robinson Crusoe had to live on them. They wheeled, flapping weakly. I'm not going to throw any more. Penny quite enough. Lot of thanks I get, not even a caw. They spread foot and mouth disease, too. If you cram a turkey, say, on chestnut meal, it tastes like that. Eat pig like pig. But then why is it that saltwater fish are not salty? How is that? His eyes sought answer from the river, and saw a rowboat rock at anchor on the treacly swells, lazily its plastered board. Kino's eleven. Trousers. Good idea, that. Wonder if he pays rent to the corporation. How can you own water, really? It's always flowing in a stream, never the same, which in the stream of life we trace. Because life is a stream. All kinds of places are good for ads. That quack doctor for the clap used to be stuck up in all the greenhouses. Never see it now. Strictly confidential. Dr. High Franks. Didn't cost him a red like McGinney, the dancing master, self-advertisement. Got fellows to stick them up, or stick them up himself, for that matter, on the QT, running in to loosen a button. Fly by night. Just the place, too. Post no bills. Post a hundred and ten pills. Some chap with a dose burning him. If he... Oh! Eh? No! No! No, no, I don't believe it. He wouldn't, surely. No! No. Mr. Bloom moved forward, raising his troubled eyes. Think no more about that. After one. Time ball on the ballast office is down. Dunsink time. Fascinating little book, that is, of Sir Robert Ball's. Parallax. I never exactly understood. There's a priest. Could ask him. Pear. It's Greek. Parallel. Parallax. Met him pike hoses, she called it, till I told her about the transmigration. Oh, rocks! Mr. Bloom smiled, oh, rocks, at two windows of the ballast office. She's right, after all. Only big words for ordinary things on account of the sound. She's not exactly witty. Can be rude, too. Blurt out what I was thinking. Still, I don't know. She used to say Ben Dollard had a bass barrel-tone voice. He has legs like barrels, and you'd think he was singing into a barrel. Now, isn't that wit? They used to call him Big Ben— not half as witty as calling him base barrel tone. Appetite like an albatross. Get outside of a baron of beef. Powerful man he was at stowing away number one base. Barrel of base. See, it all works out. A procession of white-smocked sandwichmen marched slowly towards him along the gutter. Scarlet sashes across their boards. Bargains. Like that priest they are this morning. We have sinned. We have suffered. He read the scarlet letters on their five tall white hats. H. E. 
L. Y. S. Wisdom Healy's. Y. Lagging behind, drew a chunk of bread from under his foreboard, crammed it into his mouth and munched as he walked. Our staple food. Three bob a day, walking along the gutters, street after street. Just keep skin and bone together, bread and skilly. They are not boil. No. M. Glade's men. Doesn't bring in any business, either. I suggested to him about a transport show-cart with two smart girls sitting inside, writing letters, copy-books, envelopes, blotting paper. I bet that would have caught on. Smart girls writing something catch the eye at once. Everyone dying to know what she's writing. Get twenty of them round you, if you stare at nothing. Have a finger in the pie. Women, too. Curiosity. Pillar of salt. Wouldn't have it, of course, because he didn't think of it himself first or the ink-bottle I suggested with a false stain of black celluloid. His ideas for ads like plum-trees potted under the obituaries. Cold meat department. You can't lick em. What? Our envelopes. Hello, Jones, where are you going? Can't stop, Robinson. I am hastening to purchase the only reliable ink-eraser. Can sell. Sold by Healy's Limited, 85 Dame Street. Well, out of that ruck I am. Devil of a job it was collecting accounts of those convents. Tranquilla convent. That was a nice nun there, really sweet face. Wimple suited her small head. Sister? Sister. I am sure she was crossed in love by her eyes. Very hard to bargain with that sort of a woman. I disturbed her at her devotions that morning, but glad to communicate with the outside world. Our great day, she said. Feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Sweet name, too. Caramel. She knew I. I think she knew, by the way, she. If she had married, she would have changed. I suppose they really were short of money. Fried everything in the best butter all the same. No lard for them. My heart's broke, eating, dripping. They like buttering themselves in and out. Molly, tasting it, her veil up. Sister? Pat Claffy, the pawnbroker's daughter. It was a nun, they say, invented barbed wire. He crossed Westmoreland Street when apostrophe S had plodded by. Rover Cycle Shop. Those races are on today. How long ago is that? Gear Phil Gilligan died. We were in Lombard Street West. Wait, was it Tom's? Got the job in Wisdom Healy's year we married. Six years. Ten years ago. Ninety-four he died, yes. That's right, the big fire at Arnott's. Val Dillon was Lord Mayor. The Glencree dinner. Alderman Robert O'Reilly emptying the port into his soup before the flag fell. Bob Bob, lapping it for the inner alderman. Couldn't hear what the band played. For what we have already received, may the Lord make us. Milly was a kitty then. Molly had that elephant-gray dress with the braided frogs. Man tailored with self-covered buttons. She didn't like it because I sprained my ankle first day she wore choir picnic at the sugar loaf. As if that. Old Goodwin's tall hat done up with some sticky stuff. Flies picnic, too. Never put a dress on her back like it. Fitted her like a glove, shoulders and hips. Just beginning to plump it out well. Rabbit pie we had that day. People looking after her. Happy. Happier then. Snug little room, that was, with the red wallpaper. Dockerels. One and ninepence a dozen. Millie's tubbing night. American soap I bought. Elderflower. Cozy smell of her bath water. Funny she looked, soaped all over. Shapely, too. Now photography. Poor Papa's daguerreotype atelier he told me of. Hereditary taste. He walked along the curbstone. Stream of life. What was the name of that priestly-looking chap who was always squinting in when he passed? Weak eyes, woman. Stopped in Citroen St. Kevin's Parade. Pen something. Pen Dennis? My memory is getting... Pen? Of course it's years ago. Noise of the trams, probably. Well, if he couldn't remember the day father's name, that he sees every day. Bartel Darcy was the tenor, just coming out then, seeing her home after practice. Conceited fellow, with his waxed-up mustache, gave her that song, Winds That Blow From The South. Windy night that was, I went to fetch her. There was that lodge meeting on about those lottery tickets after Goodwin's concert, in the supper-room, or oak-room, of the mansion-house. 
he and I behind. Sheet of her music blew out of my hand against the high school railings. Lucky it didn't. Thing like that spoils the effect of a night for her. Professor Goodwin linking her in front. Shaky on his pins, poor old sot. His farewell concerts. Positively last appearance on any stage. May be for months and may be for never. Remember her laughing at the wind, her blizzard collar up. Corner of Harcourt Road, remember that gust? Brfoo! Blew up all her skirts and her boa nearly smothered old Goodwin. She did get flustered in the wind. Remember when we got home, raking up the fire, and frying up those pieces of lap of mutton for her supper, with the chutney sauce she liked, and the mulled rum? Could see her in the bedroom from the hearth, unclamping the busk of her stays. White. Swish and soft flop her stays made on the bed. Always warm from her. Always liked to let herself out. Sitting there, after till near two, taking out her hairpins. Millie tucked up in Betty House. Happy. Happy. That was the night. Oh, Mr. Bloom, how do you do? Oh, how do you do, Mrs. Breen? No use complaining. How is Molly those times? Haven't seen her for ages. In the pink, Mr. Bloom said gaily. Millie has a position down in Mullinger, you know. Go away. Isn't that grand for her? Yes, in a photographer's there. Getting on like a house on fire. How are all your charges? All on the baker's list, Mrs. Breen said. How many has she? No other in sight. You're in black, I see. You have no... No, Mr. Bloom said. I have just come from a funeral. Going to crop up all day, I foresee. Who's dead when, and what did he die of? Turn up like a bad penny. Oh, dear me, Mrs. Breen said. I hope it wasn't any near relation. May as well get her sympathy. Dignum, Mr. Bloom said. An old friend of mine. He died quite suddenly, poor fellow. Heart trouble, I believe. Funeral was this morning. Your funeral's tomorrow while you're coming through the rye. Diddle, diddle, dum, dum, diddle, diddle. Sad to lose the old friends, Mrs. Breen's woman eyes said melancholily. Now that's quite enough about that. Just quietly. Husband. And your lord and master? Mrs. Breen turned up her two large eyes. Hasn't lost them anyhow. Oh, don't be talking, she said. He's a caution to rattlesnakes. He's in there now with his law books, finding out the law of libel. He has me heart scalded. Wait till I show you. Hot mock turtle vapor and steam of new baked jam puffs, roly poly, poured out from Harrison's. The heavy noon reek tickled the top of Mr. Bloom's gullet. Want to make good pastry, butter, best flour, demerara sugar, or they'd taste it with a hot tea. Or is it from her? A barefoot Arab stood over the grating, breathing in the fumes. Deaden the gnaw of hunger that way. Pleasure or pain, is it? Penny dinner. Knife and fork, chained to the table. Opening her handbag, chipped leather, hat pin. Ought to have a guard on those things. Stick it in a chap's eye in the tram. Rummaging. Open. Money. Please take one. Devils if they lose sixpence. Raise cane. Husband barging. Where's the ten shillings I give you on Monday? Are you feeding your little brother's family? Soiled handkerchief, medicine bottle, pastille that was fell. What is she? There must be a new moon out, she said. He's always bad, then. Do you know what he did last night? Her hands ceased to rummage. Her eyes fixed themselves on him, wide in alarm, yet smiling. What? Mr. Bloom asked. Let her speak. Look straight in her eyes. I believe you. Trust me. "'Woke me up in the night,' she said. "'Dream he had a nightmare.' "'Indiges. "'Said the ace of spades was walking up the stairs.' "'The ace of spades?' Mr. Bloom said. "'She took a folded postcard from her handbag. "'Read that,' she said. "'He got it this morning.' "'What is it?' Mr. Bloom asked, taking the card. "'U.P.' "'U.P. up,' she said. "'Someone taking a rise out of him. "'It's a great shame for them, whoever he is.' "'Indeed it is,' Mr. Bloom said. "'She took the card back, sighing. "'And now he's going round to Mr. Benton's office. "'He's going to take an action for ten thousand pounds,' he says. "'She folded the card into her untidy bag and snapped the catch. "'Same blue serge dress she had two years ago, "'the nap bleaching. 
seen its best days. Wispish hair over her ears, and that dowdy toque, three old grapes to take the harm out of it. Shabby genteel. She used to be a tasty dresser. Lines round her mouth, only a year or so older than Molly. See the eye that woman gave her passing. Cruel. The unfair sex. He looked still at her, holding back behind his look of his discontent. Pungent mock turtle oxtail mulligatawny. I'm hungry, too. Flakes of pastry on the gusset of her dress. Daub of sugary flour stuck to her cheek. Rhubarb tart with liberal fillings. Rich fruit interior. Josie Powell, that was. And Luke Doyle's long ago. Dolphin's barn. The charades. U. P. Up. Change the subject. Do you ever see anything of Mrs. Beaufoy? Mr. Bloom asked. Mina Purefoy? She said. Philip Beaufoy, I was thinking. Playgoers Club. Matchamoff and thinks of the master stroke. Did I pull the chain? Yes, the last act. Yes. I just called to ask on the way in. Is she over it? She's in the lying in hospital in Hollis Street. Dr. Horn got her in. She's three days bad now. Oh, Mr. Bloom said. I'm sorry to hear that. Yes, Mrs. Breen said. And a house full of kids at home. It's a very stiff berth, the nurse told me. Oh, Mr. Bloom said. His heavy, pitying gaze absorbed her news. His tongue clacked in compassion. Tch, tch. I'm sorry to hear that, he said. Poor thing, three days. That's terrible for her. Mrs. Breen nodded. She was taken bad on the Tuesday. Mr. Bloom touched her funny bone gently, warning her. Mind, let this man pass. A bony form strode along the curbstone from the river, staring with a rapt gaze into the sunlight through a heavy stringed glass. Tight as a skull piece, a tiny hat gripped his head. From his arm, a folded dust coat, a stick, and an umbrella dangled to his side. Watch him, Mr. Bloom said. He always walks outside the lampposts. Watch. Who is he, if it's a fair question? Mrs. Breen asked. Is he dotty? His name is Cashel Boyle O'Connor Fitzmaurice Tisdell Farrell, Mr. Bloom said, smiling. Watch. He has enough of them, she said. Dennis will be like that one of these days. She broke off suddenly. There he is, she said. I must go after him. Goodbye. Remember me to Molly, won't you? I will, Mr. Bloom said. He watched her dodge through passers towards the shop fronts. Dennis Breen, in skimpy frock coat and blue canvas shoes, shuffled out of Harrison's, hugging two heavy tomes to his ribs, blown in from the bay, like old times. He suffered her to overtake him without surprise, and thrust his dull gray beard towards her, his loose jaw wagging as he spoke earnestly. Mashuga, off his chump. Mr. Bloom walked on again easily, seeing ahead of him in sunlight the tight skull piece, the dangling stick umbrella dust coat, going the two days. Watch him. Out he goes again, one way of getting on in the world, and that other old mosey lunatic in those duds. Hard time she must have with him. You, P, up. I'll take my oath, that's Alf Bergen, or Richie Golding. Wrote it for a lark in the Scotch house, I bet anything, round to Menton's office, his oyster eyes staring at the postcard. Be a feast for the gods. He passed the Irish Times. There might be other answers lying there like to answer them all. Good system for criminals. Code. At their lunch now. Clerk with the glasses there doesn't know me. Oh, leave them there to simmer. Enough bother waiting through forty-four of them. Wanted. Smart lady typist to aid gentlemen in literary work. I called you naughty, darling, because I do not like that other world. Please tell me what is the meaning. Please tell me what perfume does your wife. Tell me who made the world. THE WAY THEY SPRING THOSE QUESTIONS ON YOU, AND THE OTHER ONE LIZZIE TWIG. MY LITERARY EFFORTS HAVE HAD THE GOOD FORTUNE TO MEET WITH THE APPROVAL OF THE EMINENT POET A. E., MR. G. O. RUSSELL. NO TIME TO DO HER HAIR DRINKING SLOPPY TEA WITH A BOOK OF POETRY. BEST PAPER BY LONG CHALKS FOR A SMALL AD. GOT THE PROVINCES NOW. COOK AND GENERAL X. CUISINE HOUSEMAID KEPT. Wanted live man for spirit counter. Resp girl, R.C., wishes to hear of post in fruit or pork shop. 
James Carlyle made that. Six and a half percent dividend. Make a big deal on Coates' shares. Cocanny. Cunning old Scotch hunks. All the toady news. Our gracious and popular viscerin. Bought the Irish field now. Lady Mountcashel has quite recovered after her confinement and rode out with the Ward Union stagehounds at the enlargement yesterday at Rathos. Uneatable fox. Pot-hunters, too. Fear and Jack's juices make it tender enough for them. Riding astride. Sit her horse like a man. Weight-carrying huntress. No side-saddle or pillion for her. Not for Joe. First to the meat and in at the death. Strong as a brood mare, some of those horsey women. Swagger around livery stables. Toss off a glass of brandy neat, while you'd say knife. That one in the Grosvenor this morning. Up with her on the car, whish, whish. Stonewall or five-barred gate put her mount to it. Think that pug driver did it out of spite. Who is this she was like? Oh, yes, Mrs. Miriam Dandre that sold me her old wraps in black underclothes in the Shelbourne Hotel. Divorced Spanish-American. Didn't take a feather out of her my handling them, as if I was her clothes horse. Saw her in the vice-regal party when Stubbs, the park ranger, got me in with Waylon of the Express, scavenging what the quality left. High tea. Mayonnaise I poured on the plums, thinking it was custard. Her ears ought to have tingled for a few weeks after. Want to be a bull for her. Born courtesan. No nursery work for her, thanks. Poor Mrs. Purefoy. Methodist husband. Method in his madness. Saffron bun and milk and soda lunch in the educational dairy. Y. M. C. A. Eating with a stopwatch, thirty-two chews to the minute, and still his mutton-chop whiskers grew. Supposed to be well-connected. Theodore's cousin in Dublin Castle. One Tony relative in every family. Hardy annuals he presents her with. Saw him out at the three jolly topers marching along bareheaded, and his eldest boy carrying one in a market net. The squallers, poor thing, then having to give the breast year after year all hours of the night. Selfish those titis are. Dog in the manger. Only one lump of sugar in my tea, if you please. He stood at Fleet Street crossing. Luncheon interval. A sixpenny at Rose? Must look up that ad in the National Library. An eightpenny in the Burton. Better. On my way. He walked on past Bolton's Westmoreland house. Tea. 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 I forgot to tap Tom Kernan. S -t 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 -t. Three days imagine groaning on a bed with a vinegared handkerchief round her forehead, her belly swollen out. Phew! Dreadful, simply. Child's head too big. Forceps. Doubled up inside her, trying to butt its way out blindly. "'groping for the way out. "'Kill me, that would. "'Lucky Molly got over hers lightly. "'They ought to invent something to stop that. "'Life with hard labor. "'Twilight, sleep, idea. "'Queen Victoria was given that. Nine she had. "'A good lair. "'Old woman that lived in a shoe, "'she had so many children. "'Suppose he was consumptive. "'Time someone thought about it "'instead of gassing about the what was it, "'the pensive bosom of the silver effligence.' Flapdoodle to feed fools on. They could easily have big establishments, whole thing quite painless out of all the taxes, give every child born five quid, at compound interest up to twenty-one five per cent, is a hundred shillings and five tiresome pounds, multiplied by twenty decimal system, encourage people to put by money, save hundred and ten, and a bit twenty-one years want to work it out on paper, come to a tidy sum more than you think. Not stillborn, of course. They are not even registered trouble for nothing. Funny sight, two of them together, their bellies out, Molly and Mrs. Moisel. Mother's meeting. Pathesis retires for the time being, then returns. How flat they look all of a sudden after. Peaceful eyes, weight off their mind. Old Mrs. Thornton was a jolly old soul. All my babies, she said, the spoon of pap in her mouth before she fed them. Oh, that's yum, yum, yum. Got her hand crushed by old Tom Wall's son. His first bow to the public. Head like a prize pumpkin. Snuffy Dr. Murrin. People knocking them up at all hours. For God's sake, doctor, wife in her throes. Then keep them waiting months for their fee. 
to attendance on your wife. No gratitude in people. Humane doctors, most of them. Before the huge high door of the Irish House of Parliament, a flock of pigeons flew. Their little frolic after meals. Who will we do it on? I pick the fellow in back. Here goes. Here's good luck. Must be thrilling from the air. Apjohn, myself, and Owen Goldberg up in the trees near Goose Green playing the monkeys. Mackerel, they called me. A squad of constables debouched from College Street, marching in Indian file. Goose step. Food heated faces. Sweating helmets patting their truncheons. After their feed with a good load of fat soup under their belts. Policeman's lot is off to happy one. They split up in groups and scattered, saluting towards their beats. Let out to graze. Best moment to attack one in pudding time. A punch in his dinner. A squad of others marching irregularly. Rounded Trinity railings making for the station. Bound for their troughs. Prepare to receive cavalry. Prepare to receive soup. He crossed under Tommy Moore's roguish finger. They did right to put him up over a urinal, meeting of the waters. Ought to be places for women. Running into cake shops. Settle my hat straight. There is not in this wide world a valley. Great song of Julia Morkins. Kept her voice up to the very last. Pupil of Michael Balfe's, wasn't she? He gazed after the last broad tunic. Nasty customers to tackle. Jack Bower could a tale unfold. Father a G man. If a fellow gave them trouble being lagged, they let him have it hot and heavy in the bridewell. Can't blame them after all with the job they have, especially the young hornies. That horse policeman, the day Joe Chamberlain was given his degree in Trinity, he got a run for his money, my word he did. His horse's hoofs clattering after us down Abbey Street. Lucky I had the presence of mind to dive into Manning's, or I was souped. He did come a wallop, by George. Must have cracked his skull on the cobblestones. I oughtn't to have got myself swept along with those medicals. And the Trinity jibs in their mortar boards, looking for trouble. Still, I got to know that young Dixon who dressed that sting for me in the mater, and now he's in Hollis Street where Mrs. Purefoy. Wheels within wheels. Police whistle in my ears still. All skedaddled. Why he fixed on me. Give me in charge. Right here it began. Up the Boers. Three cheers for Dewet. We'll hang Joe Chamberlain on a sour apple tree. Silly billies. Mob of young cubs yelling their guts out. Vinegar Hill, the Butter Exchange Band. Few years' time, half of them magistrates and civil servants. War comes on, into the army, helter skelter. Same fellows used to. Weather on the scaffold high. Never know who you're talking to. Corny Helleher, he has Harvey Duff in his eye. Like that Peter or Dennis or James Carey that blew the gaff on the Invincibles. Member of the corporation, too. Egging raw the youths on to get in the know at the time drawing secret service pay from the castle. Drop him like a hot potato. Why those plain-clothes men are always courting slavies. Easily twig a man used to uniform. Square pushing up against a back door. Maul her a bit. Then the next thing on the menu. And who is the gentleman does be visiting there? Was the young master saying anything? Peeping Tom through the keyhole. Decoy duck. Hot-blooded young student fooling round her fat arms, ironing. Are those yours, Mary? I don't wear such things. Stop, or I'll tell the missus on you. Out half the night. There are great times coming, Mary. Wait till you see. Ah, go along with your great times coming. Barmaids, too. Tobacco shop girls. James Stevens's idea was the best. He knew them. Circles of ten so that a fellow couldn't round on more than his own ring. Sin, fine. Back out, you. Get the knife. Hit in hand. Stay in. The firing squad. Turnkey's daughter got him out of Richmond, off from Lusk. Putting up in the Buckingham Palace Hotel under their very noses. Garibaldi. You must have a certain fascination. Parnell. Arthur Griffith is a square-headed fellow, but he has no go in him for the mob, or gas about our lovely land. Gammon and spinach. Dublin Bakery Company's Tea Room. Debating Societies. That republicanism is the best form of government. That the language question should take precedence of the economic question. Have your daughter inveigling them to your house. Stuff them up with meat and drink. Michaelmas Goose. 
Here's a good lump of thyme seasoning under the apron for you. Have another quart of goose grease before it gets too cold. Half-fed enthusiasts. Penny roll and a walk with the band. No grace for the carver. The thought that the other chap pays best sauce in the world. Make themselves thoroughly at home. Show us over those apricots, meaning peaches. The not far distant day. Home rule sun rising in the northwest. His smile faded as he walked, a heavy cloud hiding the sun slowly, shadowing Trinity's surly front. Trams passed one another, ingoing, outgoing, clanging. Useless words. Things go on same day after day. Squads of police marching out, back. Trams in, out. Those two loonies munching about. Dignam carted off. Mina Purefoy, swollen belly on a bed groaning to have a child tugged out of her. One born every second somewhere, other dying every second. Since I fed the birds, five minutes. Three hundred kicked the bucket. Other three hundred born, washing the blood off. All are washed in the blood of the lamb, bawling, ma. City full passing away, other city full coming, passing away too. Other coming on, passing on. Houses, lines of houses, streets, miles of pavements, piled up bricks, stones, changing hands. This owner that, landlord never dies, they say. Other steps into his shoes when he gets his notice to quit. They buy the place up with gold, and still they have all the gold. Swindle in it somewhere. Piled up in cities, worn away age after age. Pyramids in sand. Built on bread and onions. Slaves, Chinese wall. Babylon. Big stones left. Round towers. Rest rubble. Sprawling suburbs. Jerry built. Kerwin's mushroom houses built of breeze. Shelter for the night. No one is anything. This is the very worst hour of the day. Vitality. Dull, gloomy. Hate this hour. Feel as if I had been eaten and spewed. Provost's house. The Reverend Dr. Salmon. Tinned salmon. Well, tinned in there. Like a mortuary chapel. Wouldn't live in it if they paid me. Hope they have liver and bacon today. Nature abhors a vacuum. The sun freed itself slowly and lit glints of light among the silverware opposite in Walter Sexton's window, by which John Howard Parnell passed unseeing. There he is, the brother. Image of him. Haunting face. Now that's a coincidence. Course hundreds of times you think of a person, and don't meet him. Like a man walking in his sleep. No one knows him. Must be a corporation meeting today. They say he never put on the city marshal's uniform since he got the job. Charlie Cavanaugh used to come out on his high horse, cocked hat, puffed, powdered, and shaved. Look at the woebegone walk of him. Eaten a bad egg. Poached eyes on a ghost. I have a pain. Great man's brother. His brother's brother. He'd look nice on the city charger. Drop into the DBC, probably, for his coffee. Play chess there. His brother used men as pawns. Let them all go to pot. Afraid to pass a remark on him. Freeze them up with that eye of his. That's the fascination, the name. All a bit touched. Mad Fanny and his other sister, Mrs. Dickinson, driving about with scarlet harness. Bolt upright like Sir J. McArdle. Still David Sheehy beat him for South Meath. Apply for the Chiltern hundreds and retire into public life. THE PATRIOT'S BANQUET EATING ORANGE PEELS IN THE PARK SIMON Daedalus SAID WHEN THEY PUT HIM IN PARLIAMENT THAT PARNELL WOULD COME BACK FROM THE GRAVE AND LEAD HIM OUT OF THE HOUSE OF COMMONS BY THE ARM. OF THE TWO-HEADED OCTOPUS, ONE OF WHOSE HEADS IS THE HEAD UPON WHICH THE ENDS OF THE WORLD HAVE FORGOTTEN TO COME, WHILE THE OTHER SPEAKS WITH A SCOTCH ACCENT, THE TENTACLES. THEY PASS FROM BEHIND MR. BLOOM ALONG THE CURBSTONE, BEARD AND BICYCLE, YOUNG WOMAN. And there he is, too. Now that's really a coincidence, second time. Coming events cast their shadows before. With the approval of the eminent poet, Mr. Geo Russell, that might be Lizzie Twig with him. A. E. What does that mean? Initials, perhaps. Albert Edward, Arthur Edmund, Alphonsus Eb Ed L. Esquire. What was he saying? The ends of the world with a Scotch accent. 
tentacles, octopus, something occult, symbolism, holding forth. She's taking it all in, not saying a word, to aid gentlemen in literary work. His eyes followed the high figure in homespun, beard and bicycle, a listening woman at his side, coming from the vegetarian, only wedge bobbles and fruit. Don't eat a beefsteak. If you do, the eyes of the cow will pursue you through all eternity. They say it's healthier. Wind and watery, though. Tried it. Keep you on the run all day, bad as a bloater. Dreams all night. Why do they call that thing they gave me nutsteak? Nutarians, fruitarians, to give you the idea you were eating rump steak. Absurd. Salty, too. They cook in soda, keep you sitting by the tap all night. Her stockings are loose over her ankles. I detest that, so tasteless. Those literary, ethereal people they are all. Dreamy, cloudy, symbolistic. Esthetes they are. I wouldn't be surprised if it was that kind of food you see produces the like waves of the brain, the poetical. For example, one of those policemen sweating Irish stew into their shirts. You couldn't squeeze a line of poetry out of him. Don't know what poetry is, even. Must be in a certain mood. The dreamy, cloudy gull waves o'er the waters dull. He crossed at Nassau Street corner and stood before the window of Yeats and Son, pricing the field glasses. Or will I drop into old Harris's and have a chat with young Sinclair? Well mannered fellow, probably at his lunch. Must get those glasses of mine set right. Goers' lenses, six guineas. Germans making their way everywhere. Sell on easy terms to capture trade. Undercutting. Might chance on a pair in the railway, lost property office. Astonishing the things which people leave behind them in trains and cloak rooms. What do they be thinking about? Women, too. Incredible. Last year, traveling to Ennis, had to pick up that farmer's daughter's bra and hand it to her at Limerick Junction. Unclaimed money, too. There's a little watch up there on the roof of the bank to test those glasses by. His lids came down on the lower rims of his eye rides. Can't see it. If you imagine it's there, you can almost see it. Can't see it. He faced about, and, standing between the awnings, held out his right hand at arm's length towards the sun. Wanted to try that often. Yes, completely. The tip of his little finger blotted out the sun's disk. Must be the focus where the rays cross. If I had black glasses. Interesting. There was a lot of talk about those sunspots when we were in Lombard Street West, looking up from the back garden. Terrific explosions they are. There will be a total eclipse this year, autumn sometime. Now that I come to think of it, that ball falls at Greenwich time. It's the clock is worked by an electric wire from Dunsink. Must go out there some first Saturday of the month. If I could get an introduction to Professor Jolie, or learn up something about his family. That would do, too. Man always feels complimented. Flattery where least expected. Nobleman, proud to be descended from some king's mistress, his foremother. Lay it on with a trowel. Cap in hand goes through the land. Now go in and blurt out what you know you're not to. What's parallax? Show this gentleman the door. Ah! His hand fell to his side again. Never know anything about it. Waste of time. Gas balls spinning about, crossing each other, passing. Same old ding-dong always. Gas, then solid, then world, then cold, then dead shell drifting around, frozen rock like that pineapple rock. The moon. Must be a new moon out, she said. I believe there is. He went on by La Maison Claire. Wait. The full moon was the night we were Sunday fortnight, exactly. There is a new moon. Waiting down by the tulka. Not bad for a fair view moon. She was humming. The young May moon, she's beaming, love. He, other side of her. Elbow. Arm. He. Glowworms lay a lamp. Is gleaming, love. Touch. Fingers. Asking. Answer. Yes. Stop. Stop. If it was, it was. Must. Mr. Bloom, quick breathing, slowly are walking past Adam Court. With a keep quiet relief, his eyes took note that this is the street here, middle of the day, of Bob Doran's bottle shoulders. On his annual bend, M. Coy said, They drink in order to say or do anything, or cherche la femme. 
up in the comb with chummies and street-walkers, and then the rest of the year sober as a judge. Yes, thought so. Sloping into the empire. Gone. Plain soda would do him good. Where Pat Kinsella had his harp theatre before Whitbread ran the Queen's. Broth of a boy. Dion Boki called business with his harvest moon face in a pokey bonnet. Three pretty maids from school. How time flies, eh? Showing long red pantaloons under his skirts. Drinkers, drinking, laughed, spluttering, their drink against their breath. More power, Pat. Coarse red, fun for drunkards. Guffaw and smoke. Take off that white hat. His parboiled eyes. Where is he now? Beggar somewhere. The harp that once did starve us all. I was happier then. Or was that I? Or am I now I? Twenty-eight I was, she twenty-three. When we left Lombard Street West, something changed. Could never like it again after Rudy. Can't bring back time. Like holding water in your hand. Would you go back to then? Just beginning then. Would you? Are you not happy in your home, you poor little naughty boy? Wants to sew on buttons for me. I must answer. Write it in the library. End of part one of chapter eight of Ulysses.